So continuing on with the bootstrap stuff, uh, doing some more fun with some bootstrap, uh, a student had a question about images. And I talked about this place image in one of my prior classes. And if you just have, you can use these in your site to, to generate some, uh, oh, I've deleted the wrong one. Did I? Oh, here we go. Uh, and remember, place image goes out and creates an image of a specific size. So in this case, I have a 200 by 200 image. And if I call that uh, three times on my page, I'm going to get exactly the same image. Why is that? Right. It's calling the same URL. So the browser says, that must be the same picture. So I'm not going to make another web request. I'm going to use the one that I have in my cache. So I go and get it once. And it's going to duplicate that across my site. If I don't want that to happen, I need to fool this place image site by uh, changing the URL for each one. Now, one nice thing is I can add a question mark and anything I want. And the, the browser says, oh, that's a different URL. The browser sees this as a different image. So it goes out and makes another request. PlaceImage.com doesn't see this at all. It ignores the query string and gives me a 200 by 200 image. As if it was a new call, though, each time I make a new call, I get a different image. So if I do it that way, I'm going to get three different images. I, I might, because it's all random, I might get two of the same images. But at least I'm kind of fooling that. Every time I reload my page, I'm going to go out and request three different images. Isn't that cool? So I could use that. That's kind of like lorem ipsum images for my site. I think that's pretty cool. What? Yes, you can use these for your site. Absolutely. I think, I think these are great ways of uh, adding some lorem ipsum to your site. And notice how I put three images in a row. It automatically uh, puts them down, down the side here. All right, while we're on images, let's go to the Twitter bootstrap stuff. And look at some of the components. Um, where is it? It's not media object. The uh, the browser lets us add uh, styles to images. So let's try and add this class of an image rounded to my image here. And reload my page and see what happens. So it made it a nice rounded corner on my image. Isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? So let's do another one. Let's do this circle. Whoa, what was that? So let's do my circle. We'll add this one here. And we might as well do the Polaroid class and add that here. Reload my page. Now, it added this nice rounded style to this. Isn't that cool? That's the, Twitter. That's the Twitter added that style to my image and basically made a, a, uh, a viewport that's, that's rounded. It, it placed, uh, you know, it, it's cutting off this by adding some radius and borders and things like that. And this Polaroid one, if you can see that, uh, added a little bit of a border around it, so it looks like an old style Polaroid snapshot with a nice little border on that. Right, for a true play, you need a big one yeah, at the bottom. That's funny. All right, so those are some of the classes and images. Isn't that cool? And every time I load it again, I get different images. 
but the CSS applied on top of it makes it pretty cool. All right, so that's some images. Uh, I also wanted, and we went through the, the icons already. Those are all the, the glyph icons that are given to you. Uh, and there are lots of these out there. There's not just the glyph icons. If you go here, this is the website that produces those, and they have a lot of other things that they produce. Uh, some nicer images that they don't give away that you have to actually purchase or license. Uh, but there are lots of these type of icons out there in the world that they give you the sprite CSS for as well as the images. So you can just download those and put your own images in place. And you can also create your own sprites with all of that. All right, so let's... Uh, Let's add some other features. There is a, uh, we've done the nav bar. Our, our site has a nice little nav bar here at top that's responsive. Let's add a breadcrumb system. If you know. Does it yes. No. And it, it handles uh, sub menus and everything. You can have lots of those. So this is a, a uh, breadcrumb example, and this is what it creates. So let's just copy that and put it into our website somewhere. Uh, let's put it above our images and reload this guy. And now we've got a nice breadcrumb where these link back to a different hierarchy. You guys all know what breadcrumbs are for? Like Hansel and Gretel, you're leaving a breadcrumb path so I can get back uh, up a level. And so typically these are used for hierarchical levels of your site. So I might have data folder inside of my library folder inside of my home. And these just provide links to go up a level. So obviously these don't go anywhere. And this would change on every site. So is this practical to leave this on a static site? On a static site, would that be a pain in the rear to have to have this? You'd have to recode this on every page, right? So that's why we have back-end development languages like PHP, Rails, uh, uh, .NET, ASP.NET, all of that. Uh, we would probably, if you think about it, write this in a function or a method in whatever back-end language we have and have it spit out this class, this UL with some LIs and some spans and everything in here. Uh, and all that we would change would be the links and where it goes to. So I could easily write a PHP function that takes a bunch of A tags and spits out this amount of code wherever I want on my page. And that might change based on where I'm at uh, every time I generate the page, the back end is going to generate this stuff. So that's what it, the real power is. This, this is not particularly useful on a single page site. I mean, that would be really too hard to maintain. Similar to some other, the pagination, they, they have the pagination links. This would be useful to style what the pagination looks like. So in Rails, for instance, we use like the will paginate gem and things like that, those that have had Rails. Uh, we might just use this to style how that looks. And, uh, and then we'd get this type of a, a layout. But the programmatics of it would be generated by the back end program. All right, any questions on that? They're giving you the basic, oh, so Twitter, so a student asks, does Twitter do any automatic stuff like that? Uh, no, it's basically just a styling and structure of the HTML uh, framework. So even this thing up here is controlled by a JavaScript, a jQuery plugin that we added to that. So all of that is, is being handled by jQuery. 
all we did was add the styling that the jQuery took advantage of. So if you want to utilize a button or the pagination, you need some back-end coding to actually do that. They don't do it automatically. All right, uh, alerts, these are kind of cool. Again, these would be something to style uh, an alert that, say, in Rails, instead of having that alert box at the top, you could style it so it looks different. Uh, and this is a nice style because um, it has a little close box on it. So this is this is the style here, and it actually has a different color. Uh, it's hard to here. This side is easy to see. So it's got a different color here, and it's got a close box here that is tied to the jQuery. And at uh, jQuery, when I click that button, hides that element. That's all it does. It's just hiding that element in the CSS using a display none block, right? It just changes the style of that particular element. Because when I reload it, it's back. So this, this would be, again, something you would program in the back end to spit out a warning or an error. And they have different types. <laughs> um, right. So here's a here's a a danger one. Uh, instead of alert, uh, instead of just alert, I can say alert and alert error. So we add this class to the one that I just put in. Oh snap! All right, so let's let's do that one. And if I reload my template now, it's now changed to a red. You know, this is obviously really bad, right? But it still has the same close box, and everything is bad. Right? You have different levels of bad, right? <laughs> Isn't that cool? It gives you all kinds of little components that I can add to my website. Uh, progress bars are really cool. Uh, let's add a progress bar. And I like to do this animated one. So let's add a progress bar. And you might use that uh, when you're uploading a file or something like this. But again, this is almost useless without some back-end process doing something with that. See, that's so much better. What happened? There we go. So I've got a what looks like an animated progress bar. And the only way to change this is to change the properties of this block. Okay, and we can do that in jQuery. Uh, if we look at this element, it's got a width of 40%. That is the how long the progress bar is. So if I change this to 80 and reload my page, I'm almost done, right? I'm 80% done is what that is meaning. So the styling takes care of, of positioning this background, this animated GIF inside of this square box. And, you know, again, it's all nicely responsive and proportional. Isn't that sweet? So using jQuery, I can actually change this. And I'm going to do it in the console. Now, this is where you guys should already know how to do J JavaScript. Uh, we're going to get to jQuery in a little bit, but I can actually do some things like uh, using jQuery, I use the dollar sign, and I can select something in the page. That automatically goes through the DOM, the document object model, and gives me a, a pointer, more or less, to that block. So if I give this an ID, let's give this guy... An ID, because I like IDs, they're a lot easier to deal with, uh, of my progress. What? Yeah, I can do classes, I can do anything. I just like progress. I like IDs, they're easier. So let's uh, reload this guy. And in uh, if I look at this element, 
you see it's got an ID of progress, right? We added that. In my console, then, I can say, give me the ID of progress. All right, so now A is now a variable that, that is this block of code. It's basically a JavaScript object from the DOM that is this block of code. And we'll get into jQuery more in detail, but I just wanted to show you some cool stuff. So I can say A, and I can call methods on my A because it's an object, and I can say change the CSS for the width property, and instead of making it 80%, make it 20%. Isn't that cool? Isn't that just sweet stuff? Yeah, now you find out how right. Right, and you're constantly changing the style, that class, as as you get more and more uploading. You'd have to have some more programming in the background, but all I have to do is change this. Let's change it to 30, and it animates it automatically from each position that I change it. Let's change it to 40%. Swing! Isn't that sweet? So obviously we need some back-end programming to know that we've uploaded some stuff and that's beyond where we're at at this point. But uh, I just wanted to show you that's how we can change. With jQuery, we can manipulate these elements on the page uh, based on user interaction in some way. Like they click a button and it will, we could change a class. We'll do a lot of that in jQuery. Isn't that cool? We gotta do it one more time. Let's go all the way 100%. Swing, and we're all done. And then I can say a.hide, and it's gone. Well, its container isn't gone. Uh, I was just hiding the, the, the uh, bar itself a.show. So I can, using jQuery methods, I can manipulate the document object model, those pieces, HTML and CSS in my page programmatically. It's just really cool. That's a GIF, so I'd have to change, reload a different image into that place. So if I, if I look at this... Uh, is that an animated GIF? Or is that it's an animated GIF. So if I look at, I'd have to find the image. It's in the. Uh, it's probably see it's inside the style sheet, so I'd have to find it in the style sheet and stuff. So, a little difficult to do. But it is possible. Sure, I could swap out images and things like that. All right, and we'll get into jQuery stuff later. I just wanted to show you using this programmatically, you can do some cool stuff with that. Uh, they have different options, all kinds of options for that. Um, and, oh, the other one which I think is cool are these badges. So you're used to badges if you have an iPhone. An iPhone invented this kind of a concept where this tells you you have six new messages or you have six alerts associated with something. These are notifications that something has changed. And so I could say, uh, let's add this span to my nav bar and say I have six new contacts. I mean, the, we're just pulling it out of the air here. but. If I reload my page now, ah, it's got a nice little six tag next to it. Isn't that cool? Again, that would be something you would program on the back end in PHP or Rails or ASP that would send out that HTML if they have a certain number, and you would change that number in the back end. You'd be spitting out just this part of the code. Where's my badge? Just this would either have a number or not, or I'd spit out that span or I wouldn't. And that's all programmatically on the back end in a language. So I can change this to three, whatever that is, and it will uh, change my value. Isn't that cool? So there's some really cool uh, 
elements that we can add to our page. Um, and let's do some, some buttons. We didn't do any buttons. Uh, they have lots of buttons that I can add. They have button groups, and these are buttons that are grouped together. Uh, I can add, uh, so let's do this one. This is kind of fun. Let's put that above my progress bar. Oh, yeah, you've got to have lots of divs. So here's my buttons, and of course, it, since it's a div, my my class adds that square blue border around it. But now these buttons are available. And typically, these buttons are then controlled by jQuery actions. So if I click on something, it's going to do something in my page. So we'll get to that, hooking them up to be useful later. But we can also add those little icons, which are kind of fun. I can add an icon, an eye icon. Remember that has icon dash. And I can say uh, left. And I can make this one. And this one, uh, instead of left, we'll call it uh, center. And this one, uh, right. So when I reload it now, I've got my nice little icons. And this is starting to look like some uh, Word or WYSIWYG editor kind of buttons. So when I click on this, I expect the text to, right, to left align or middle align, things like that. And these visual icons give us a better clue about what this really means, right? Isn't that cool? How easy that was to add. Uh, you know how hard this would be if you didn't have a framework like this? That's like writing PHP from scratch. Ha uh ha. -huh. I'm not getting any laughs on that one. All right, any questions on any of this stuff? You can use any of these components uh, for your site. Add them, have fun with them, get used to using them, and then our next assignment will be using jQuery to make these do something, make some of our buttons and, and uh, menus and other stuff do something using the jQuery. All right? Any questions on any of this stuff? At this point, I think you have enough to do your assignment. You're going to take a framework like I've done here in class, add your styles, make a website that's professional, add your images to it, and make it look better than mine, right? It should not be hard to do. <laughs> but uh, see, how, isn't that just really cool stuff? All uh, responsive. Oops. All nicely responsive. All right. Any questions? Last chance. All right.